Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get right into this video. So today we're doing part two of Sister Spice's 21st birthday nails. These are the nails we did in part one, which was the last video. Make sure you go watch this one first. We tell a bunch of creepy Reddit stories and we do this epic charm filled nail set. So for this hand, we're gonna do something a little bit similar, but we're gonna switch it up, you know, kind of change the color add a little bit more design just to do something a little different but also make them kind of match let me just show you what we're gonna need so here are the poly gels that we're gonna need we just have a bunch of different variety of light pink colors so the other hand was kind of like a hot pink neon but for this hand we're doing light pink then we're also gonna need some kind of tiny nail charms and also a bunch of giant jumbo mega charms <laughs> gonna be using some of this light pink glitter some of these tiny gems that you sprinkle over the entire nail we have these charms which i'm pretty excited to use these we're gonna use one of these charms of course the taurus ones so this is pretty much all we're gonna need let's just get right into this nail set so here's sister spice's natural nails we're gonna just clean them up a little bit and do some basic nail prep so we're gonna start off by pushing back the cuticles Now I'm going to take this circular cuticle drill bit and I'm just going to work this around the cuticle area. take my cuticle scissors and I'm just going to trim off any of this excess dead skin. Okay, now I'm just going to file over the surface of the nails and also work this around the cuticle area. Okay, let's get sizing out these nail tips. I'm just going to glue on the nail tips now. Nail tips glued on. Now I'm just going to trim them down the same length as the other hand. So like, maybe like here. Whoa, whoa. Now I'm going to reshape the nail tips. Okay, now I'm just going to remove the shine from the nail tips using my fine grit sanding band. Next up is going to be adding on some dehydrator. And now we're going to add on some primer. Okay, now we're going to add on a layer of base coat. Mm -hmm. 
base coats on now. Let's get into this poly gel application. So like I said in the beginning, we're doing all these nails kind of like light pink. So we're gonna start on the pointer finger and this nail is going to be bubblegum pink color. And we're just gonna do this as the whole nail. And now Sister Spice is gonna get into the creepy Reddit stories. Hey everyone, it's me, Sister Spice. I have a few Reddit stories and this first one that I'm gonna read is from one that I didn't get to read from the last video. And it's under the subreddit no sleep and the title is the lights i installed at my house won't turn off i finally got around to installing some lights in my side yard at my house you know the ones that automatically turn on when someone walks in front of it my parents always had them at my childhood home and as an adult woman who now lives on her own i decided it was a pretty decent security measure i added a total of four lights to my house one in the front one in the back and one on either side of my house so it's giving very square house mm -hmm. it didn't seem overkill especially since i am paranoid and being home alone in the dark bothers me more than anything heck my electric bill is is as expensive as it is because i I leave lights on in the dark rooms. Again, I'm a female who lives alone, so I believe this is certainly justifiable. They work perfectly for the first few nights. One or two would click on and then go off a few minutes later. Now, I should mention, I live in Florida, so we have a lot of wildlife that walks through the yard here. It's not unusual for a possum or a raccoon to wander through my yard in the middle of the night. Not to mention outdoor cats that are loose in my neighborhood as well. Wild raccoons, you know, playing tug of war with the trash. Yep. Wild cats, you just feed one of them some spicy tofu and they become your pet. Even squirrels and lizards that walk close enough to the sensor set those things off because they're the highly sensitive ones. However, the other night I ran into an issue. One of the lights is positioned next to a window which is over the sink of my kitchen. The side yard is small because there's a fence separating mine from the neighbors. I was loading the dishwasher at about 9.30 p.m. I always do this before I start heading to bed. And the light clicked on. It scared me because I was still getting used to them. So I quickly took a glance out the window. There was a possum crawling along the fence, but also staring directly at me as if it was annoyed. I was disturbing its nightly stroll. I waved to it like it could see me and continued to load the dishes. I grabbed my water bottle from the fridge and headed out of the kitchen ready to go down the hall and the light still remained on. I didn't think anything of it since they normally stay on for a bit, then click off. I stopped to turn back around and watch the window, making sure that the light was going to turn off. It didn't. After a few moments passed by and the light still refuses to turn off, my throat was now dry because this type of thing scares me. So I slowly approached the window to look out of it. For a minute, I was relieved because I saw nothing. I figured it was a technical error, so I went to bed and said I'll fix it in the morning. The next day I got up and headed outside to inspect the light. When I got below it, I noticed the light was off, and upon waving my hand up in front of the sensor, it clicked on. I just assumed I didn't wait long enough for it to shut off, so I went back inside and went about my Saturday afternoon. It was later that night when I was boiling some water for some pasta, and the light clicked on again. This time I completely ignored it and went about making my dinner. I hadn't even noticed that in the 15 minutes it took me to cook the pasta, serve it, and then get the pan washed, the light was still on. I picked up my bowl of pasta, which was on the counter next to the sink, and when I glanced up, I froze. The electronic floodlight was on, and hanging down in front of the window was a head. What? Like someone was on my roof, leaning down and <gasps> over the edge. Uh, uh. <laughs> Everything was washed out by the bright light, so it only appeared as a shadow, but it was enough to make me go cold and numb. The only detail I was able to see was the faint whites of whoever's eyes as their head hung over the side of my house. Their short hair was also hanging down and was blowing by the small gust of wind. My mouth was open in shock, yet no sound was coming out. I was incapable of moving. I watched as the head slowly slid upwards and out of sight back up onto the roof. I'm assuming. The light remained on. Engaging in my fight or flight response, I dropped my bowl of pasta and headed down the hallway for my phone, which was resting next to the TV. While I was quickly moving, whoever was on my roof was moving too. I heard loud scurrying and scratching above me as it scampered across my roof. I stopped, scrambling to pick up my phone, and the scampering above me continued for a few seconds. I dialed 911 and allowed it to ring as I stood there. 
At this point, I now stood in my living room, which has double doors leading to the backyard. It's meant to add to the open floor plan this house advertised. While I still stood there, the light at the back of my house clicked on and lit up my backyard. It made me speechless as the 911 operator had already come on the line and was asking me what my emergency was. I watched the windows frantically as the light continued to wash out my backyard and then I saw it. Slowly sliding down from above was the shadow of the head. Mm -mm. It was peering into the window looking at me. I could still see the faint whites of its eyes and now the slight whites of their teeth. They were either smiling or not, I could not tell. What followed is a sound that I could still hear even when it's quiet. There was a sound of tapping, like a nail on the glass. It sounded like it was tapping on my window, asking to be let in, mm -hmm. but I saw no arm or hand reaching down to do so. I backed up and out of sight of the window and into the hallway. The 911 operator was still asking that I give a location. There's, there's someone on my roof, I said quietly, thinking whatever it was, it could hear me. Pardon me, ma'am? There's someone on my roof. They're like watching me. I think they're going to try and break in, I said again. The operator told me to stay out of sight and wait for the officers to show up. So I did. I remained seated in the hallway for what felt like hours and listened to the continued tapping. Whatever it was, was still asking to be let in asking me to come back to the window. It was merely 20 minutes till I heard the sirens and the tapping stopped once they were in auditory range. I'll say what I said to the cops, which is, I know this sounds crazy because once the cops were outside and asking for me to come out, the lights were now off. No floodlights, no head, no eyes, no tapping. Yet here I stood in my driveway sounding like a crazy person to the police. I gave my statement and allowed them to check the property. After further inspection, I was walked around to the right side of my house, which is where I first saw the head, and was told that my gate was unlocked and open. What do you think? What should I do? Should I go somewhere for the night? I asked the officer who was walking me back to my front door. If you really want to know what I think, I think you left your gate unlocked when you went to check the light this morning, he said flatly. What about the person? And the sounds? Someone was there! I also think the lights casted some shadow of an animal walking by and a raccoon decides to have a field day on your roof. He attempted to calm my tone. There's no footprints, no scuff marks, no scratches on the window. Only paw prints. I think you need a good night's sleep and to relax tomorrow. So I took his word for it. What on earth? No, why? I watched them drive away from the window and headed to bed. I had to put my earbuds in to listen to music so that I couldn't hear the tapping and scratching in my head. Tonight is when the situation got even more serious than it already was. I was sitting in my living room watching a movie this evening when the lights behind my house came on yet again. Still shaken by the night before, I instantly muted my TV. The only light coming into the house now was from the floodlights and the movie. I sat in silence watching the windows. My eyes darted around frantically, even to the windows that were not lit. The minute I unmuted my TV is when I heard the sound again, the scratching and scraping like something was being dragged across my roof. I jumped up from my seat, knocking the remote off my lap and onto the floor. I let the sounds of the movie mix with the horrible sounds above me. I grabbed my phone and had 911 ready to dial and watched the windows with more interest than before. The scraping turned into thudding now footsteps maybe. Something was up there. I could feel my house shake. The frames on my walls were rattling and some fell off. I watched one wind window in my living room start to become dark. Something was crawling down from my roof. Okay, pointer finger is done. We're gonna move on to the thumbnail because it's gonna be the same color as the pointer finger. All I could see was the shadow of it. A human figure with its arms and legs longer and stretched out. It scratched and thumped as it climbed down the wall of one of my houses and over my window. It moved like a spider, the way it was able to slowly come down. I watched as it rotated and moved horizontally, disappearing from the window and moving to the wall. It was now in between the windows and I had lost sight of it. I retreated to the spot in my hallway more shaken than the night before and once again dialed 911, giving the exact same information, details, and location. More officers were on the way. The operator asked that I remain on the phone with her, so I did. The scratching continued as the figure, I'm assuming, was moving around. While I sat there, the shaking mess that I was, I watched as my house became flooded with lights. One by one, the lights turned on. It was silent for a while after this, while my house remained lit up and I was cowering over the phone, 
I was impatient for the police to arrive, so I asked how far away they were. There was no response. Ma'am, how far away are they? The noises here stopped, but I think they're still outside, I repeated. All that followed were raspy breaths through the phone, <gasps> like someone was clinging to their last breath of life. Ma'am, are you okay? Did I lose connection? I attempted to get a verbal response. The only response I got was chilling. You have to let us in now, Casey. <gasps> the tapping on the window began again, louder, at every window. The scratching began on the roof, louder. I shrieked and threw my phone away across the hall. I have tucked myself in my call closet now. My phone is on 10% and I've used my battery to write this out because I don't even know if the police are coming. I don't even know if I actually talked to a real 911 operator. <gasps> What if she didn't talk to a real 911 person either the first time? And that's why they're like, yeah, you just need to calm down. The tapping is still occurring on my windows and I can hear it moving around from wall to wall, trying to catch sight of me. The lights are still on. The end. One comment said, Florida man, the strangest critter on the planet. Critter. <laughs> mm -mm. That was the end of that story. Thoughts? Okay, so this next story that I'm gonna read is on the subreddit Let's Not Meet. And the title is I, parentheses, a pizza guy, parentheses, intercepted a kidnapping during a delivery. What? I deliver pizza and it has been a really busy night. Non-stop back and forth without any time to pause and take a leak. I've been so busy that I wasn't really thinking about bathroom breaks, but we're also going through a bit of a heat wave in our area, so I've been drinking copious amounts of water. All of a sudden, as I was driving to this particular delivery, the urge to go hit me, like things went from 0 to 60 in an instant. Thankfully, I was close to a customer so I could get this one over with quickly, or so I thought. I pulled up to the house and it was an area I delivered in before, so I could immediately see something wasn't right. All the lights were off in the house, not even the glow of the TV or anything. It was extra apparent because this street light closest to the door happened to be out of order. And on top of it all, the block was dead quiet. So it was like the street light was out. You could see like mm -hmm. their house was dark and it's like just dark. Yeah. This is a big university area. And obviously there aren't many student renters in July, but there had to be at least one person because someone ordered this pizza. Maybe they just liked sitting in the dark or they were out back in the yard, whatever. I just didn't want to get out of my car and knock on a quiet house in the middle of the night around 9.30 p.m without first checking that I had the correct address and the customer was inside. It was scorching that night, even after sundown. My car AC is a joke and the piping hot pizzas didn't help much. So I had to try and open the car door as infrequently as possible to keep any cold air in. I called the number the customer provided and the voice on the other end kind of briskly and out of breath, kind of like breathy, out mm -hmm. of breath. Yeah, I just tried to keep it clear and concise. Hey, it's your pizza out front, but there doesn't appear to be anybody home. And the customer replied, still gasping for air. Yeah, I'm not home. I had to pee so badly by that point that I was much less patient than I otherwise would be with the customer right out of the gate. Well then, we're going to have to terminate the order because I've arrived in the stated delivery window. You were supposed to pay in cash, so I don't know what to tell you. Plan ahead next time. I instantly regretted letting my bladder do the talking for me as the voice on the other end came through more clearly as a young, bubbly, and very distraught girl who couldn't have been older than 20 or 25. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was running down the street so I could barely hear you, she cried. I just switched you out of my AirPods. Is that better? Sorry, I completely lost track of time at work, but I knew you were coming. That's why I'm literally running home right now. Please don't, please don't leave. I'm starving and I don't have a car. Seriously, please don't leave. Five minutes tops, okay? I feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's like to be hungry and running late and you have no car, but not living near any restaurants. Plus, when I heard her voice, I began to remember more specifically having delivered to this place a couple times before, and she'd always been perfectly nice. Now I felt bad for snapping at her. I tried to walk it back while simultaneously looking out my window for potential spots to pee. No, no, my bad. I'm letting the heat get to me and it's not your fault. No need to rush. See you when you get here. I hung up and while surveying the street, I was starting to think that I was really out of luck. All the other houses had people in them and were close together. So there were no clumps of trees or anything out of the way, patches of land or just anything. 
Of course, I had just tossed my empty water bottle at the last delivery because I'm an idiot. Finally, I decided it was escalating to the point of an emergency and the safest bet was to use a bush in front of the woman's house. She wasn't home. Okay, next nail is gonna be this light pink jelly color. She wasn't home, the street light was out so no one could see me. The people who were home were inside. My car was parked across the street and we're a small shop who don't wear uniforms. So if someone did spot me, they'd have no way to connect me to my employer. Animals pee outside all the time. Humans are animals. That's fine. Just trying to justify it. It's mm -hmm. natural. I scurried over to the tallest bush in front of her yard. She didn't really have much of a yard, more just of like a walkway lined with bushes and flowers that ran adjacent to her front door. The biggest cluster of bushes, the only one where I could be sure there was no visible splatter on the side of the house, was about four <laughs> feet from her door. Okay, I, I didn't know this was that close to the front door, okay? This is not right, actually. This is close. Like, I'm thinking it's like, it's kind of it's near like the her street. front yard and then a bush near the street, you know, mm -hmm. like near the sidewalk in the street. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. But it's like <clears throat> right in front of her it's door. It's right in front of her door. He's like, I'm trying not to get splatter. No way. Um, I looked both ways, unzipped and let fly. After the initial millisecond of relief, I noticed the sound was way off. More like <gasps> peeing on something solid than something leafy. I started panicking, thinking I aimed wrong. But once I start, I can't stop midstream. So I kept squinting into the darkness to see if maybe I was hitting a key or a rock or just something and just move it a few inches over. Instead, all of a sudden, I heard a way more concerning noise, a deep voice. And before I could turn around, assuming I'd been caught by a neighbor, a man came leaping out of the bushes. He blew by me, brushing my golden shower off him as he did. Golden shower! <laughs> he spit pretty empathetically on the ground, so I think I might have beamed him right in the face. Mm -mm. I didn't see where he went after a few paces, but... Though this next part is kind of blur, I do think I remember hearing a car screech out front a bit further away after a minute. I'd gotten some night vision by that point, so I was able to make out his height, build, and outfit, but only the most general details of each. I was in shock that I didn't even put my pee stick away. I just stood there trying to figure out what happened. He literally is standing there, mm -hmm. unzipped, just out in the open, just shocked. <laughs> While that guy scurried away, he still is unzipped and he's just like, uh, uh, uh. The reality was so terrifying that my mind refused to accept it and impulsively searched for a reasonable explanation that could make everything okay. I thought, could these bushes lead to some backyard area and just look like they were against the house? Could they have been obscuring an open window? My inner voice was desperately screaming, bruh, that man was wearing a hoodie in a 90 degrees weather. That was a bad man. You're in a bad situation. But the very idea that I was within inches of a guy who would be hiding in bushes at all, let alone in front of a young woman's house at night, just wasn't something I was ready to grapple with yet. I was coping by not coping. My fight or flight's response totally failed me at that point because my dumbness did the absolute last thing I should have done and approached the bush to try to validate this. There must have been a good reason for a man in a hoodie to be behind these bushes in the middle of the night. I would just run back to my car. Mm. I'd be like, girl, there's a creepy man hiding in your bush. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do about it? So I walked over to the side, turned on my phone flashlight, and tried to peer around the line of shrubbery. Pro tip, as scary as things may look in the dark, seeing them with a single beam of your flashlight can sometimes make it even worse. That's when I saw the bag. There was a tattered drawstring bag sitting behind the bush, slightly splashed with pee, but I was in such a moronic daze from shock that I groped around for it, thinking, see, this is, this is it. This will explain why he was back here. It explained it. Once I maneuvered it over and pulled it open, I saw a sharp knife and a roll of duct tape and a bottle of pills. The delusion officially broke at this point and all the adrenaline endorphins and self-preservation instincts that had been suppressed kicked in 10 times over. I became whatever the opposite of dazed is, more laser focused than I have ever been in my whole life with one singular goal, get back to my car. I dropped the bag, booked it across the street, got in my car and slammed the pedal to the floor before the door was even all the way closed. I went as far as I could, as fast as I could until I hit a red signal. Then I pulled off to the side 
and realized I shouldn't be driving any more than necessary in the condition I was. I pulled into the parking lot of a 24-hour drugstore and took a breath. I was finally calm and coherent, enough to zip up and formulate a plan of action. My first lucid thought was, who do I call first, the police or the girl whose household that was? I thought about it for what couldn't have been more than 10 seconds, but felt like an hour, and decided, okay, I'm in my locked car with the engine running. If trouble starts, I can drive away. I know something's up. She might not. She needs to know not to keep walking in that direction. But as I was dialing her number, it occurred to me, what if there was no girl? I thought I remembered delivering to this house before, but what if I was wrong? What if the girl on the phone was just a decoy to get me there to rob me or worse? Every pizza guy on the planet has seen the evil genius documentary by now. So I thought she called me out of breath. She wasn't home. The whole thing was off. Can't risk it. I'll start with the cops. I called 911. The operator was very helpful in keeping me calm because I was a complete wreck by this point. He kept assuring me that someone would be there soon. Okay, I finished the jelly nail. Now we're gonna skip the ring finger and we're just gonna go on to the pinky nail, which is going to be really light pink color. I kept telling them they had to get here before the girl did, but I was trying to express three thoughts at once and really damaging my own credibility. It came out more as, You've got to save this girl because he wasn't after me. I, I was just delivering a pizza. Unless they were after me, in which case there might not be a girl. But I talked to one on the phone, so you should find the girl because they used her to lure me there. But if she is real, she doesn't know about the guy who is also real. And there could be more guys if they're actually a girl. And you know what? Even if there isn't a girl, there might actually be more guys. I only checked one part of the bush, so I don't actually know. I didn't mean to, like, this was back when I thought the girl was real, but not home, but she might be real. Finally, they basically just asked me to stop talking and stay yeah. on the mm -hmm. line. But that's when I saw an incoming call from the customer. I couldn't answer it without d disrupting my 911 call, so I just ignored it. But then she sent me this text like, hey, I'm here, I don't see you. I told 911 she was there and they said officers were only minutes away, but who knows how long that meant. Especially after I'd given such a scattered account of events and pa my panic. I just felt overwhelmed with guilt because my rational mind said the odds of her being a decor girl for some large scam targeting pizza guys were low and the odds of her being the intended victim of the predator was high. So I put my 911 call on mute where I can hear them but they can't hear me and turned back, heart absolutely pounding out of my chest, compulsively muttering, frick, 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 <laughs> the entire way. Then I took 911 off of mute and told them that I had returned to look for the girl. They weren't happy about that, but I saw her ma mandering past the parked cars in the streets looking to see if one was mine, and I waved her down, flashing my brights. She bounced on over to the window of my car, happy-go-lucky. I figured that that was a good sign that she wasn't in any whatever this was but i was also just so scared to be back in gen in the general area and to not know what had just happened or what's going on i kept whispering get in get in and she was like get in oh uh you want me to get the pizza from the back i didn't want to make the same mistake with her that i that i made with 911 so instead of trying to tell the whole story i stuck to the bare basic facts there was a man in your bushes. I'm on the phone with the police. I don't know where he is right now. Please get in the car so we can lock the doors. I was barely able to get even those sentences out and I was shaking like I had 10 cups of black coffee. I held up my phone with 911 on the screen to verify it for her. I thought that was why she got in the car with no further explanation, but it turns out that wasn't entirely it. You still there? Is she with you? Are you safe? Is there anyone else? 911 kept checking in, not knowing who the third party I was talking to was. I reassured them and we drove more cautiously this time to the location 911 instructed us to wait so we could speak with police after they cleared the area. I didn't actually have to do much after that. The police came pretty soon after. A police car met us. I gave a statement telling them everything I observed and she went to go speak to more officers in more detail. It turns out the reason she got right into a strange pizza guy's car without probing or deepering in my story is because she knew who the man was right away from my description. She had an abusive ex-boyfriend who was apparently psychotic enough. He immediately came to mind. 
from hearing. There's a guy in your bushes. She later called us to thank me and insist on leaving a huge tip. I wasn't there when the call came in, so the kid who answered didn't know to refuse or accept the money. But the manager already promised the next time we see her, we can load her up with enough one free pie cards to last a lifetime. Easily the scariest thing that has ever happened to me on the job or off. I don't get the chance to tell the story much because I try to avoid sharing it with, with anyone who could possibly know the girl or know the event but I'm still not the same since. Even though I know he didn't have anything to do with me directly, this truly shook me to my core. So man in the bush, let's not meet. One comment was like, out of all the places to pee, it was right on top of the stalker. Nice aim, dude. That was the end of that story. Um, I think it was pretty funny. Scary at the same yeah. time. Like, Can you imagine that? You're a pizza delivery person or you're just delivering food and you're like, mm -hmm. man, I really need to pee and you just pee somewhere and it just happens to be on top of a crazy stalker person. What else you got, Farah? Same subreddit, let's not meet. I told a serial killer to F off. In 2006, I was a college student at ASU. I lived in an off-campus apartment on the ground floor and it was a block off a major street here in Phoenix called Baseline. These details are important. In the summer of 2006, Phoenix, Arizona was plagued by two serial killers. One was the Phoenix shooter, who ended up being a team of two guys randomly shooting people, and the other one was the baseline killer. Having two serial killers put the entire city on edge, and everyone was talking about it. I even saw articles in Times or Newsweek about the situation. So the fall 2006 semester had just started. Now you may have heard this, but Phoenix is hot in August. It would get stuffy in my apartment, so I'd leave the window cracked a little bit because the morning air is really nice. The blinds provided visual cover. Anyways, one morning, a strange sound woke me up. It was the crack of dawn, 4.45 a.m., and the sun was just barely coming up. It was the sound of someone lightly tapping on the window, mm -mm. and it seemed intentional. In my tired state, I figured it could be a bird or some branch or something trivial. Tap, tap, tap. Silence. After about 90 seconds of nothing, the tapping returned and it was absolutely purposeful. I was positive it was a human producing this noise. I thought it was my boyfriend who thought it'd be cute to try and scare me sometimes. Cute and quirky! Mm -hmm. I decided I'd be a bit of a brat and make him wait, but I was also getting really angry. How dare he pull a prank on me when I'm trying to sleep? This is just like him. I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind about disturbing my sleep like this. Tap, tap, tap. At a certain point, I got up to get a glass of water, still being in the midst of wanting to annoy my stupid boyfriend who thought this would be funny. But I saw some movement through the slit in the blinds and I marched over and yanked the blinds so I could see. Definitely not my boyfriend. I said very loudly, what the heck? He sort of seemed taken aback by my anger, but only slightly. The man I saw will be with me forever, or more specifically, his eyes and the feeling they gave me were insanely creepy. Honestly, words can't do it justice how terrifying his eyes were. They looked like black orbs with no white in them. Absolutely predatory. When I seen pictures of Ted Bundy or Charles Manson, that's exactly what he looked like. Even if you saw a picture of how they looked, it's different when you experience it in person. It totally floored me. Something about this man was profoundly wrong. He was crouched down like an umpire. He had on dark pants, a dark purple shirt, and a dark Nike hat. He had dark skin. I thought he was Hispanic, but later I found out he was a light-skinned black guy. You'll find out how I learned his name later. Anyways, after I yelled, What the heck? at him, he whispered to me, Can I come talk to you? Can can I talk to you? Mm -mm. Can no, I talk sir. To you for There's a no reason. If you want to talk to me, knock on the door. Knock on the door. Why are you tapping on my window? If you want to know how insanely creepy that is to hear, just whisper that sentence out loud to yourself right now. Can I talk to you? Oh, he was whispering like that. Yeah, he was. I was making it funny. It still sends chills down my spine when I think of how that sounded. His hand suddenly moved towards his waist. I later learned he would blitz attack his victims and he probably had a gun. All that separated us was a mesh screen. Now, this is about three second interaction at this point, And for some reason, I thought of Ted Bundy and how he'd pretend to be crippled to target his victims. 
I thought of my mom telling me to not be nice to strangers. Don't be afraid to be mean. My thinking wasn't as calculated as all that, but it was more than nano processing of how to deal with the situation. So when he whispered that, I started yelling at him, hell no, get the F out of here, douchebag. I shut the window angrily and locked it. I can't overemphasize how incredibly irritated I was that this person had the audacity to disturb my precious sleep. That's all she's thinking of? I laid back down. <laughs> she said, she just shut the window. She just shut the window and was like, I can't believe he ruined my sleep. I would be like, that's a murder out there. I gotta call the police. What are you doing? She said, I laid back down and wondered if I've been too mean. What if he needed help? That didn't really make sense. Why would he be like tapping and whispering if he was truly in trouble? I decided he was a creep after all. I was too annoyed to go back to sleep, but I sort of laid back down. I told my roommate about an hour later and she sort of jokingly asked if it could have been the baseline killer. When she said that, my heart sank. So she didn't realize that it was it could have been a killer. Mm -hmm. She just thought it was some creepy Rando. man outside her window. Wouldn't you still be concerned? Wouldn't you call the care. police after Someone that and be care. like, there was a man uh -huh. right outside my window and he was trying to talk me. When she said that, my heart sank. His face looked exactly like it did in the police sketches that were on the billboard everywhere. The only problem is that those billboards showed him with dreads, and the man at my window had no dreads. Apparently, he was some sort of disguise artist who'd wear wigs. Updating the police sketch would have been a nice move, but they didn't. Okay, so for this last now, we're going to be doing a French tip. I'm going to use this other light pink color as kind of like our nude. And I'm just going to put this at the cuticle area. I called the Phoenix police, and the detective I talked to agreed that it sounded like his MO. The suspect would say something to throw off his target and then he'd blitz attack. The detective said that my angry response probably made me seem like too much of a hassle and moved on. The only problem was that I thought the guy looked Hispanic and the detective said that many witnesses described him as black. I thought they might want to come out and try for some samples or surveillance videos or something, but I didn't hear back from the detective. My parents freaked out. They got us knives, pepper spray, and put up signs. We learned another tenant had complained the same thing that same morning. I never learned the details, but this idiot was apparently going around the whole complex trying to find a target. The stupid apartment wouldn't let us out of our lease, so we moved to a second floor apartment right above our old unit. The neighbors who moved into our old unit were horrible, obnoxious tweakers who would do meth and play pitbull on repeat for hours. <laughs> and had knife fights on, at 11 a.m. on weekdays. There were many times I wondered if they might be worse than the actual serial killer who came to my window. That unit was cursed somehow. Anyways, on September 4th, 2006, they arrested Mark Gudeu. I don't know how to say his last name. I think the detectives didn't call me back because they were days away from arresting him. When I saw his mugshot, I was sick, but also relieved. He was absolutely the guy outside my window. To me, he looked like he could be Hispanic. You can judge for yourselves if you Google it. He's on death row in Arizona now. His wife tried to mount some campaign to show that the police were framing him or something. On a personal level, it certainly would make for an interesting coincidence if this poor innocent man who they framed also whispering like a creep and tapping my window. I can't think of something more scary than a serial killer tapping on your window. That actually happened to me. And if it happens to you, just scare them right back. Don't be afraid to be downright rude to someone who's injecting themselves into your space. Mm -hmm. It could save your life. If you're not afraid to throw your weight around and tell someone off, trust yourself. You can still be kind and, ge and a generous person and still tell someone to F off. The end, just be crazier. Just be crazier just be back. Crazier. Way crazier. And they're gonna be like, they're gonna be freaked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just met my serial killer matchup. So this next story, same subreddit, let's not meet. And the title is, my friend went crazy. Later found out she sent 65,000 texts after one date and broke into his house. She sent a guy 65,000 mm -hmm. I don't think I've even sent that many texts in my whole lifetime of texting. Oh, what? Like, you're just like, hi, 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 hey, hi, That's hey, how hey, long hey, would that take? Right? Like, how long would that take? Like, what are you typing? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of people may have heard about this girl. She was all over the news after she stalked a guy, bombarded him with 65,000 texts, and broke into his house all over one date. We met shortly after she went on that date with him and we were friends for a while before she broke into his house. At first, she seemed like a nice, quirky girl. I met her when I spent a couple of months visiting the west coast of the US in summer 2017. I thought she was cute and we spent a lot of time together. 
We were living next door to each other for a few weeks and we were never really more than friends. I have stopped having any sort of non-platonic feelings after she started to talk a lot about a guy she had met on some dating website. Apparently, he was her soulmate and she had somehow been guided to him by following her birth calendar, her birth chart. Mm -hmm. Look, it's not as crazy as it sounds. It's really not, but once, if you don't know how to read it correctly, yeah, you're crazy. I would only later come to know that they only had been on one date and he never spoke to her again. I thought this was weird, but I enjoyed our conversations for the most part and she was funny and nice, so we remained friends. Eventually, she moved on to short flings with a guy and then other girls from Tinder. All the while, she's talking to me about this guy that she was going to marry, saying that she liked how jealous he got when she would tell him about hooking up with other people. What the? A couple of weeks later, she started to get really erratic. I confronted her a few times about how she was acting and she told me that she had recently stopped taking her meds but would start them again. She came home one day and decided to tell me that she had a court date coming up for a DUI. I had no idea if this was actually true but if there was a way to find out, it happened in Arizona and her name is pretty easy to find so someone could look it up if they wanted to know. Her plan was instead to leave the country and go to South America. Okay, so I have this part done. Now I'm just going to reshape it to make sure that it's nice and crisp. We're gonna move on to the tip of the nail. Pretty simple. I'm just gonna paint on some base coat and then I'm going to sprinkle in the gems. Her plan was instead to leave the country and go to South America. I told her what a dumb idea that was, and even though she actually went all the way to the airport in a different city, she wound up coming back. Apparently, her soulmate was no longer answering her text, and she took that as a sign that she should drag herself back to where he was and fix their relationship. She was upset that he may be seeing other people, even though it seemed okay to her that she was seeing other people, right? Like, mm -hmm. she's seeing other people, but he can't. Yeah, what? Later on, she told me that she had texted him and said if he blocked her, she would know that meant he wanted her to come find him. Obviously, he blocked her and obviously that didn't go over well with her. So she moved a couple of days later and the summer was ending and I moved back to the East Coast. I didn't hear from her for a little while, but then started talking again through text and WhatsApp. She seemed like she was doing better. She told me she had found a roommate and was working on her art again and just generally seemed like she was in a better place. I was happy to have my friend back and healthy, but that didn't last longer than a couple of months. Eventually, her behavior started to seem erratic again. She was sending dozens of texts at a time and they were all over the place. Several of them had to do with her soulmate and how she was still following him even though he had called the police and blocked her. I told her to stop, try to get her to take her meds, and try to reason with her a hundred of times. I was on the opposite side of the country and had no way of getting in touch with her family who I never knew much about or friends to try to get them to help her. She was a kind person and a good friend when she was taking care of her mental health and I cared about her, but I couldn't force her to take care of herself. One day I set aside some time to call her and I told her that she was overwhelming me and that she really needed to reach out to her family or someone who could help her. She told me I couldn't do that because she needed to stay with me or she would have to go back to her ex-husband. I didn't think any of this is true, but she thought her ex-husband was going to have her killed or followed, that he had the entire police force in his pocket and had paid off her family to give him intel on where her whereabouts are and what is going on with her life. I had just moved to a job and I lived in a small studio in a big city. I had no room for anyone to stay long term and I wasn't about to do that anyway since she was starting to scare me at this point. She asked me if I was still living at my address which really freaked me out because I never given her my address or put it anywhere online and she wouldn't tell me how she got it. I asked her to leave me alone and told her we couldn't be friends anymore unless she took some steps to get better. She obviously didn't take that very well. Though I hated my tiny cramped apartment, the reason I was drawn to it was because it had great security. It was actually on the upper floors of a hotel, although the hotel rooms were much nicer than the residence, and no one was allowed through the residence elevator unless the residents had given their name to security ahead of time and the guests had to show ID. After what happened, I loved my cramped little apartment because the staff kept me safe. Okay, now I'm gonna encapsulate. It had been over a week since I had talked to her because I blocked her number and blocked her on WhatsApp. She tried texting me from four different phone numbers, but I just blocked them all and never responded. 
I was walking home from work one day and I was sure I saw her across the street from my building, but it was storming out and I didn't get a good view. I rushed upstairs and calmed myself down in my apartment. Maybe I was just being paranoid. It's a big city. Lots of people have brown hair and glasses. I'm just worried about her, but then the phone rang. The desk was calling to see if I had forgotten to let them know I had a visitor. My heart sank. I asked them who was waiting. They said they tried asking for her name or ID, but she just walked out and I knew it was her from the way they described her. I texted a mutual friend from over the summer. I wasn't really close with him, so we hadn't stayed in touch, but he had told me she had lost it and that he had blocked her too. Apparently, she had gone back on the dating site she met her soulmate on and found someone who looked just like him in my city. She was convinced it was him and had to come find him. This was a very touristy city, but there was just no way this guy had coincidentally come out here. I was sure she had gone bonkers, and I knew she was well aware of what, where that guy actually lived. I took a page out of her book and used a text-free number to text her that she should leave me alone and I, or I would call the cops if she ever came near me or my building again. In retrospect, I shouldn't have contacted her at all but I was emotional and not using my better judgment. She said she just wanted to know if I could help her find something. She texted back really fast and didn't even try to hide it. Then I deleted the text-free app so she couldn't reach me again. I lived in a very crowded area and I knew she couldn't get into my building, but I was still scared whenever I had to take public transit alone at night or through less crowded areas to get home. I had a friend who used to work for the police, but not in this city or at the time this all happened and she would drive or walk me home from work whenever she could for a while. She told me I should go ahead and report it even though they couldn't really do anything since she hadn't hurt me or nothing really. But I was embarrassed and again, I didn't use my better judgment. I felt like it was my fault for engaging with her for so long. I knew she was mentally unstable and I would still try to be friends with her and help her. Maybe I gave her the wrong idea that I could do more for her. I ended up moving to a new city for another job after that and didn't hear from her again. I later found out the reason why was that a couple of months later, she had once again gone back to Arizona and had been arrested for breaking into her soulmate's house and using his bathtub. They found a large knife in her car. I didn't want to go into too much detail about her stalking of that guy and what she said about him in our text because I wanted to try and focus more on my personal experience with her instead of his. But I could answer some questions in the comments if anyone has. Um, at the end of this whole thing is just a short summary. It says, my friend went crazy because she stopped taking her meds and was stalking guys she insisted was her soulmate. Tracked me down at my apartment across the country after I stopped talking to her went back to where she came from and broke into the guy's house and took a bath while she had a butcher's knife in her car. I later found out she had been on one date with the guy who she claimed she was in a relationship with and bombarded him with 65,000 texts. Some of them included violent messages about wanting to um, slice and dice his human body and wear them. That's basically the end of the story. Someone said, by my calculations, that is roughly one text every nine seconds, 24 seven to get to 65,000 oh a week. So every nine seconds for a whole week, every single day, you got a text. Um, to finish up the Reddit stories before we start shaping, of course, I have a two sentence horror story. It starts off, out of sheer boredom, I turned on the radio in my kidnapper's basement only to hear that he had been arrested the day before. I thought they were still searching for me, but then I heard my own voice saying how much I was glad to finally be found. Okay, so here's how the nails are looking after all the poly gels on. Really cute and pink. Now we're just going to get shaping. I have my Macartes collector and hand file. And yeah, let's just reshape these nails.
All right, so here's how the nails are looking after they have been shaped. Now we're gonna get adding on all the nail charms. So we're gonna start on the pointer finger and I'm just gonna put a really thin layer of clear poly gel on here. And I'm gonna smooth this out real quick. This is gonna be our adhesive for adding on those tiny charms that you sprinkle over the whole nail. Okay, we have our clear poly gel on there. Now I'm gonna add on a layer of top coat. Okay, now I'm just gonna sprinkle on all of these tiny gems. Gems. Okay, next nail is gonna be just filled with some charms. So this last story that I'm gonna read is same subreddit, let's not meet. And the title is, I was on someone's kill list. I didn't pre-read this, so I hope this is a good, a good one. After high school many years ago, I was in a bad place. My guardian had kicked me out after graduation. She didn't help me find a place to stay, so I lived in my car for a couple of months. I met some heavy metal dudes at, at work one day I had seen them around town and all my other friends knew who they were. Everyone loved them. We became friends over a couple of months and they offered for me to move in with them. I agreed. Looking back now, I wish I had just stayed in my car. My two roommates were brothers named Andrew and Seth. They were in a band. They also believed in the occult and anything of that sort. I never really believed in that stuff, but I'm not one to tell someone what they should believe in. They had let me live with them rent free for several months, so who was I to complain? Being the only female in the house full of young men, I was always looking over my shoulder. You never know who you can trust. Turns out I was right to worry. Over time, their friends started to stay with us for longer periods of time, sometimes weeks. Their friends were another group of brothers they had gone to school with. There were five brothers in total, but only two stayed with us consistently. The younger brother, Mark, was very polite. He cleaned up after himself and always helped with the household chores. The other brother, Adam, had a laundry list of mental problems. He had apparently done some bad drugs back in the day and it developed into what seemed like psychosis of the religious sort. He had done time in prison for assaulting a woman with a Bible. He would often look you in the eye and tell you he could see how you would die. Once he told me that I was possessed by a demon and I needed my soul cleansed. Everyone in the house knew he had these problems, but he was their friend. They helped him through the hard times and gave him a place to stay otherwise he would be on the streets i was always on guard around him after the things he told me no one seemed to be as concerned as i was they should have been one day i was sleeping and my phone rang it was my boss he asked if i could come into work an hour early it was only 12 p.m i was broke and had nothing better to do so i said yes i got up and begun getting ready to leave i walked out into the living room to see mark and andrew sitting on their couch while Adam sat on the floor by the TV. He was watching scripture videos on YouTube, some real end of day stuff. That was fairly common, so I went about my business. 
I said goodbye and left for work. My shift at work was almost complete when the phone rang. My boss answered, handed the phone to me, and said, for you. I was just a cashier, so I assumed it was a friend that couldn't reach me on my phone. I answered the phone and heard a man's voice that I didn't recognize. Hi, this is Detective Williams, and something happened at your apartment today, and we need you to come to the station to talk about it. I left work immediately. I had assumed one of the brothers had been arrested for dealing drugs or something. I was very wrong. I got to the station and was buzzed in. An officer escorted me to a small, cold room with a camera. He gave me a bottle of water and left me by myself for about 30 minutes. My mind was racing, thinking about what could have happened. He came back in and informed me that Adam had stabbed and killed Andrew at around 1 p.m. I was shocked. I had just left the house an hour before it happened and everything seemed fine. I asked if there had been a fight. The detective informed me that there hadn't been a fight and it seemed to have happened out of nowhere. I gave my statement to the police and left with nowhere to go. Still in shock and confused out of my mind, our appointment was a crime scene, so I went to another friend's house to watch the news report, since the police wouldn't give me any information on the case. If her boss didn't call her in early, mm -hmm. she would've been there. Yeah. Over the next couple of days, the information began to be released. Adam hadn't just stabbed Andrew once, not twice, but he had stabbed him over and over. After the murder, he ran down the road, still holding the weapon. He called 911 and informed them what he had done. I watched the news report in horror. We had known he was unstable, but this? He had finally confessed to a brutal murder and provided police with his notebooks. He had apparently been planning to murder all of his brothers, my roommates, and me. He thought we were possessed by demons and this was the only way to free us. Luckily, none of his intended victims were there that day. Mark unfortunately witnessed the murder, but he luckily escaped. If I hadn't gotten that call from my boss, I wouldn't be alive today. So to the man who brutally murdered my friend and wanted to murder me, let's never meet again. That's basically the end of the story and my last Reddit story. And to end off my creepy Reddit stories, of course I have a two cents horror story. Daddy, why is mommy always so mean to me? My son asked. His tear-stained face had sadness and fear. Deciding that it's finally time to tell him the truth, I say she just she's just upset that you survived childbirth and she didn't. The kid can see ghosts? I guess so. Now we're gonna continue adding on more charms to the last two nails. Let us know what you thought of these really creepy stories. Did you have a favorite one? What would you do in those situations hopefully those never happen to you but it's just like crazy to think about and this last two cents horror story um this mom ghost she's a meanie head like what <laughs> And finally, let's add on some cuticle oil. Okay guys, here's how the nails turned out. But wait, we can't forget the most important part, the crown jeweling of the pom-pom heart. Are you guys ready for this? Ooh. And here are the final results. Let us know what you guys think of this nail set in the comments. Spice, what do you think of this nail set? I'm, I'm flabbergasted. My favorite nail, I really like this Jemmy nail because I really like these hearts. Mm -hmm. Or I like the pom-pom heart because oh. I, I never got to use the pom-pom heart before. These colors work so good together. Everything just mm, really comes together in the end. Here's the thumbnail. Very cute. Oh my gosh, final reveal of all the nails together. This nail set is so cute and they work so good together. We got the kawaii hot pink glittery neon hand with full jam-packed with all these charms. Then we got the light pink princessy glitter hand. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you all next time. Bye!